All right, let's talk about the New Orleans Saints for a little bit. This is a Saints team once again in the news for a lot of the right reasons, made a lot of major changes this offseason, of course, bringing in Derek Carr, Chris Olave, year two, talented defense. Michael Thomas looks like he's coming back. There's a lot of momentum behind this football team right now. And we've got an outstanding report behind the smart money, the smart minds in football that think the Saints are going to be a lot better than people expected 2023. In fact, they're poised to be huge contenders. Yeah, Nick, I think this story you dug up about the New Orleans Saints is enough to get the Saints fans pretty excited. I think the Saints are going to surprise a whole lot of people with all the talent on this roster. How could you not expect such a thing? But we don't want to talk about all of the talent on the roster today, Nick. We don't want to talk about the superstars in Saints history. Today, we want to talk about the hard workers. We want to talk about the grinders, the everyman, the average Joe player on the Saints who came in, was consistent day in and day out, and was a strong contributor to the Saints team. These are the guys that don't get all the recognition. So let us know what guy, in your opinion, matches that description of a New Orleans Saint, and tell us about him in the comments section below. We're really excited to hear what you got to say. But Nick, how much are the Saints going to surprise us this year? Yeah, before we get into the story, Mice, I got to vote for Heath Evans. He was only with the Saints for a couple of years, but this guy was a grinder, great fullback, old school kind of guy. I actually had a chance to hear him speak in high school at a banquet. Really smart, really great guy. So my vote would be Heath Evans. But anyway, talking about the story here, look, this is the time of year where all the big money, all the smart money breaks down and projects who's going to be successful into the 2023 campaign. And the sort resource we'd like to use is Pro Football Focus or PFF. We refer to it for short. What they do is they watch every single game, every single snap, every single player, and grade everybody out. They've created a, just a massive database of performance, combine it with past performance, project it out into future performance, look at who plays each other, when, where, and how, and then simulate multiple times to come up with an average expected win total for the 2023 season. They do it before every season. And this is one of the most accurate, the most consistent projections we find. They do a great job over at PFF. Highly recommend them. Myas, if you want to go ahead and throw up what PFF's reports were from their simulations, there's a big surprise involving the New Orleans Saints. Not to us anyway, but maybe some Saints fans out there. So you see at the top of their list for most projected simulated win totals, you have Cincinnati Bengals, Kansas City Chiefs, Philadelphia Eagles. Makes sense. The, uh, San Francisco 49ers, number four. Those four teams were in conference championship games last year. Buffalo Bills are a top flight contender. But there at number six, you see the New Orleans Saints. They're projected to have the sixth highest win total per their simulation count for 2023. Minus, we've been high on the New Orleans Saints for a long time. I'm very impressed with how great their roster is. I think they're underappreciated in terms of how good their coaching is. Derek Carr is a question mark just because he's new to the franchise, but they obviously made a lot of smart moves. Bringing in John Green to help support onboarding him a little bit was a smart move. I think we're going to see huge dividends, and I'm excited to see that the folks at PFF agree. I'm curious what your thoughts are on this, Miles, but before I throw it over to you, I want to remind everyone that we have produced our first documentary-style format about the New Orleans Saints, about a forgotten moment in New New Orleans Saints history. All you Saints fans, I'm sure you will really appreciate it. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video. We'll put a link in the video, also in the description box below, giving you a quick, easy access to our brand new Saints documentary. Make sure you check it out and give us your feedback. All right, Michael, throw it over to you now. What do you think of this report involving the New Orleans Saints? Yeah, Nick, I, I want to tell everyone we worked really hard on the video, did a lot of research. I think there's a lot of great, great information you probably forgot about in there. You're really going to love it. So go check it out. But Nick, talking about the Saints here, I really, really like what is going on here. And when you look at it, it's if you look at all the factors involved, it's not that surprising that they're projected to do so well because they do have potentially a good upgrade at the quarterback position, specifically because Derek Carr has better weapons here than he did in Las Vegas. If you do the sum of the parts, Devontae Adams, obviously one of the best receivers in football. But outside of that, Michael Thomas used to be one of the best receivers in football. You look at the number two and number three guys, Olave and Rashid Shaheed, who's a you know sleeper guy for one of the best wide receivers at his that number three spot, Nick. This Saints receiving court is very, very solid. I think Derek Carr is going to have a lot of options instead of being forced just to look at Devontae Adams, stare him down every single game, hand the ball off to Josh Jacobs, and can't forget they have Alvin Kamara as well. So despite all of that offensive power, Nick, I think this team looks really, really good, and I'm not surprised that they're sixth in this model uh, projection of who is going to have the most wins in the NFL because you also look at the other things. Their strength of schedule, as of right now, there's not really too much that you can put into strength of schedule until the season actually starts. We don't know who's going to be hard and who's not. They have a pretty good start to the season. They start Titans, Panthers, Packers, Bucks, Patriots, Texans. 
that's a pretty good way to gain some momentum six games through the season, Nick. I really like the start that they have at the beginning of the season. Then they get a little tester in the middle of the season, another easy patch, and then finally division rival Atlanta Falcons last game of the season. Going to be a tough one as well. But I like how the Saints are set up this year to come in, and I think they can knock out a, like maybe easily five of those six games really early on and get a super strong start really building Derek Carr's confidence. That's the key for me there. What do you think about that potentially? Yeah, I think that's a great point, obviously getting out to a fast start. Because if you look at Derek Carr with the Raiders, he's actually had to overcome some struggles early in their career. If they get out to a fast start, I think that'll pay huge dividends for him. But look, this is also an NFC, not just an NFC South, but an NFC in general that's wide open. You have the Philadelphia Eagles, Jalen Hurts are obviously fantastic. But last year was kind of a magical season. They got a lot of great injury luck. I don't think they'll be as good uh, this coming year. The 49ers are talented, but quarterback position, what's going to happen there? A lot of question marks. And then you look at the rest of the teams. You have the Dallas Cowboys, which are perennial basically disappointments. They're always good, not great. You have the Minnesota Vikings. They were kind of a fraud last year. The Detroit Lions, I think they're going to be better, but how good are they really? The Green Bay Packers, Jordan Love. I mean, you go down the entire list here. The Seattle Seahawks are young. The LA Rams are, feel like they're in a little bit of rebuild. The Arizona Cardinals are terrible. You look at the NFC South. You have the Carolina Panthers, rookie quarterback. You have the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Who's going to play quarterback? Is it Baker Mayfield or Kyle Trask? Does it really matter? They're probably not going to be very good. I think the Atlanta Falcons are going to be tough. But again, still Desmond Ritter, year two. We don't know exactly what we're going to get. Everything is actually shaping up really well right now for the New Orleans Saints. They have probably, the way I would look at it, the most battle-tested quarterback in the NFC right now. The only guy that maybe comes close is Dak Prescott. And look, I like Dak Prescott. I'm a fan of Prescott. He's not that much better. And frankly, he may not even be better than Derek Carr. And if that's a situation you find yourself in as a New Orleans Saints fan, that's awesome. So you have probably a very clear path to winning your division. And you have an experienced battle-tested quarterback, a talented roster, both sides of the football, top 10 defense, great receiving core. Everything looks fantastic right now for the New Orleans Saints.